Welcome everybody to the first episode of a new series I'm starting. So in my 10,000 subscriber special, I laid out a new schedule for you guys in which every two weeks on a Friday I would do a random fandom lore video, which is a rhyme and by accident, but it's cool. So I did a poll on Twitter, and if you want to be part of these polls in future, you have to be following me on Twitter as that's the only place I'm going to be doing them. But I did a poll of a couple options that you'll be able to see on screen, and the winner by 10% at least of the time of me looking at it was a lore video on Middle Earth. So as always with these series, I'm going to start with one of my favourite aspects of it, and one of my favourite favourite aspects of the Middle Earth universe is the Wood Elves. When I was younger I used to absolutely love Legolas, he was my favourite character, a lot of people loved him also, a lot of people loved Aragorn, Gimli, you know, Boromir, Frodo, Sam, everybody, but mine was always Legolas. It's changed over the years, and I'd say it's probably Sam now, but I do still really, really like Legolas and the race that he, well, not that he belongs to, but that he technically rules over. So I've decided to make today's video on the Sylvan Elves or, as they're more commonly known, the Wood Elves. So to begin with, some basic information on these elves. So these elves mainly live in two kingdoms of Middle-earth, and this is the Kingdom of the Woodland Realm, also known as Mirkwood, and Lothlorien. So Sylvan Elves aren't actually pure-breed elves, and what I mean by that is that within Middle-earth mythology, elves were created by the gods, and over time they've had sort of adaptions and things, and after two breeds of elves bred together, they made the Sylvan Elves. So Sylvan Elves are made of the Nandor and also mixed with Avari. Many of the Sylvan Elves are currently ruled over by the social elites known as the Sindar or Grey Elves, and sometimes even the Noldor, which are classed as High Elves. For example, Thranduil, King of Northern Mirkwood, as well as his son Legolas, were Sindarin Elves, and mainly Thranduil ruled over the Woodland Realm. And the Woodland Realm mainly consists of Sylvan population, so it's almost like a hierarchy type thing. These Elves aren't exactly purebreed, so they're generally always ruled over, and the rulers of them are generally purebreed Elves. So there is also another kingdom in which these Elves live in, which is obviously the Kingdom of Lothlorien, and the past rulers of that kingdom were Amadea and his son Amroth. Amroth was the last Sindarian Prince of Lorien, and he was a Sindar. But one day he actually got lost at sea and never to return again. So that caused this kingdom to be handed over to Galadriel and Celeborn, and they became the de facto rulers of Lorien. So Galadriel was a High Elf, and she belonged to the house of Finarfin, but she was actually a mix of Vanya, Noldor, and Teleryn parentage, while Celeborn was also Sindarin. So just as with a lot of Elves, the Sylvan Wood Elves are described as being some of the best archers within the Middle-earth universe. They're also very, very skilled warriors, as you can tell not only from the books, but if you've seen the films, for example The Hobbit, which I know are a little bit kind of a lot of people didn't like them, a lot of people did, I'd say I'm on the side of that did like them, but you can see how skilled they are compared to a lot of, say, other elves. But they are considered less wise, and a lot of them are actually indistinguishable from the Avari, and this is the elves that never joined in the Great Journey. So their history isn't exactly explained as such, it's probably a way in one of Tolkien's archives, but we can imagine that they were probably just bred by chance and they became sort of one of the predominant races within each kingdom and then they had their own rulers, just as anything happens. It's not, it doesn't really need to be explained to be honest, he's explained enough saying who the descendants were. So obviously, the author Tolkien, who was just an amazing author and wrote The Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, he created this entire world and inspired many other worlds, such as the world that I am mainly known for, The Witcher World. But in a publication found in The Unfinished Tales, Arofa the Sindarin King of the Sylvan Elves of Mirkwood, or Greenwood the Great as he was known, raised a large force as part of the last alliance to overthrow Sauron. He was quite a headstrong king and actually disregarded Gilgalad's tactical plan and led a reckless charge in which he was slain along with two-thirds of his troops. After this behaviour, command of the Sylvan Elves was passed to his son Thranduil, and this is of course the father of Legolas. So obviously the films changed and added a lot to this sort of I suppose you could say almost law. The films have their own law, but obviously the, the books are more truthful because that's who the creator was. But I'm going to mention a few things that were most likely added in the films, but we'll have to see. Because the thing is, is this world is so expansive, and I'm not even going to pretend for a second that I know every single aspect of it. So I'm just going to tell you what I know. The Sylvan Elves of Mirkwood and the Dwarves of Erebor had a very, very bad relationship. And this was because deep within Erebor, the Dwarves held a treasure that was very sacred to the Elves, and these were gems made of pure starlight. When the elves wanted these gems from the dwarves, they refused, and this caused the elves to obviously be very, very angry. Well, when I say the elves, I mean the Sylvan Elves of Mirkwood. So they gathered their army together and went to Erebor to go and reclaim these gems, but as they got there, they saw all the dwarves running out, fire was everywhere, Dale had been destroyed, Erebor was on fire, and they realised that a dragon, or a fire drake from the north known as Smaug, had taken over. And instead of helping the dwarves, even though they brought the army to destroy them, they simply turned and left. And this caused very bad relations between the dwarves and the Sylvan Elves. 
elves. In fact, in the Hobbit books, Bilbo Baggins had to rescue the dwarves of Thorin's company from these elves. But later in the books, the elves are one of the armies that actually help fight in the Battle of the Five Armies, against Sauron's forces as he attempts to invade Erebor. And of course, they later contributed to the Fellowship of the Ring, by the Sylvan Prince Legolas joining the Fellowship. Legolas himself lived among them and presented himself as one of the Sylvan folk in Lord of the Rings, but he was not actually one of them, as he was the son of the elf king Thranduil, who had originally come from Doriath. Legolas was actually a Sindarin elf, not a Sylvan elf. So finally, to end today's video, I'm just going to talk about the elves of Lorien. So the Sylvan elves of Lorien are also called the Galadrim, and what this translates to in English, or in the common tongue in their world, is literally tree folk. So after Armoth was lost at sea, the rulers of this kingdom became Celeborn and Galadriel, as I said before. I just want to say that most Sylvan elves speak Sindarin, but the elves of Lorien had actually managed to develop their own form of it, so that even Frodo Baggins, who spoke quite a bit of Sindarin, couldn't understand them at all. So actually, during the War of the Ring, the Galadrim were the strongest of all elven kingdoms, and aided in banishing Sauron the Necromancer from Dol Guldur. Of course, he, after he was banished, he just fled to his tower, but, you know, they were very, very helpful in at least holding him back a bit. So that's all I want to say on today's video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's a new thing for me, and it's a new sort of fandom that I'm trying to cover, because I love Lord of the Rings. That they Honestly, the films and the books, the books are amazing. I haven't read them in a little while, so sorry if I'm a little rusty on that front, but the films are also honestly amazing. I watched them probably every few months I'd say. I have the extended Blu-ray editions. I think they are absolutely amazing. The Lord of the Rings films are absolutely amazing. The Hobbit films are pretty good too I'd say. But anyway, be sure to post down in the comments. Be sure to follow my Twitter. And if you go to my Twitter, when I next do a poll, during those polls I ask you for suggestions on fandom. So if there's a fandom you want me to cover, I might even put it into one of the options and then you guys can vote and see which one you want. I'm going to not include the same fandoms every week. So for example, next week I'm not going to include Middle Earth as a fandom, but then the week after I might. It honestly just completely depends. I don't want to cover Cover the same fandom twice in two weeks. I feel like there's so many out there and I'd love to cover loads. So I hope you've all enjoyed today's video anyway. Anyway guys, I'll see you all later. Thank you for watching today's video. Big thank you to the Patreon pledges as always. You guys are honestly, like, you're so amazing. And a question I wanted to ask you is, I actually own both Shadow of War and Shadow of Mordor, and I may even stream them on my Twitch, so if you want to see those games, you haven't played them yet, be sure to follow me on there and I'll probably stream them at some point soon. But the Patreon pledges, you guys are just honestly amazing. I thank you so much. YouTube are being very, very weird about, um, about accepting my challenge to the ad program. I made a request about, I'd say, over two months ago now. They haven't responded in any way. They keep on pushing it back. So you guys, honestly, you're just very, very helpful helpful on that front. You allow me to continue getting better things for these videos and improving on them. So thank you all so much. It really, really means a lot to me and I'm glad to put every single one of you at the end of these videos. Anyway, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video. Be sure to tell me what you liked about it, what you didn't like and what you think I could improve on if I got anything slightly wrong, which I don't think I did, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you for watching today's video guys and I'll see you all later.